Good morning, family, friends, visitors, Facebook viewers. Happy, happy Sunday. Welcome to St. Paul's Venice Church service, also Boys Brigade Sunday. Once is not enough, even twice, you will see all our stuff. It is a beautiful morning to be in God's presence. I am so glad. You are, you are here to worship with us. May this service be a spiritual renewal and inspiration for all of us. May we be feeling refreshed and encouraged to face this week ahead with a new faith and hope. God is so good. Clap with me three times. We will now be entered by the Boys Brigade.
that you you can be seated, let us pray. Oh Jesus Lord, Heavenly Father, that blessed Holy Spirit, shine down your light upon us, this dark world, and shower us with the gifts of your light. We worship you this morning because of your life, in its spirit and love, mercy and sustaining grace. We love you because you first love us and have called us to be in your presence. Lord, it is a privilege and joy to be in your presence wherever you are. There is light, joy, and peace. Lord, we need you all of these days of our life, and we need you to show your power to cancel the doubts of those who say our God is not real. And we have no one at home we can depend. We need you to show up on our of crimes and their which are pledged or discouraged by and boasted of the perpetuous who continue to do damage. Lord, help us to fight our battles and to be victorious because already we believe that you have given us the victory. Help us to the battle of weaknesses and disease and enemies, for greatest is, is who is in us, that he is in the world. Lord, we deserve to be better than he is in every area of our life and ask that you will take or will it, and make it die. Lord, what I will do is spend that a billion days of the world. Pleasure. We spend our days in fleeting moments doing things that do not help us or please you. It is only when we focus on your goodness that we realize our excellent plans for protection on our lives. We realize that you are God and beside you there is no love. Lord, we are perfect in every way, and we ask that you help us foil the plan of the demonic forces in our lives. We call upon you, your holy angel, to your guidance, and the Holy Spirit to envelop us to shape the devil. We ask for your forgiveness in our lives because of our hasty words and justice. Our soul is to forgive. Lord, increase us in the things where you are you, and give us the joy and peace. We need to hear the vision on which you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Continue to do. Make us a servant to be your abiding and give us the courage to face evil. For you are God who will give us the victory over all that will harm us. We see you all honor, glory, and praise in our lives. We see you in the name we pray. Amen. Please let us start. For the Lord's Prayer.
confession and pardon. Merciful God, the confessor of your love, you have a whole heart. They have failed to be in the church. They have not done your will. They have broken your law. They have rebelled against your law. They have not lost the name And they have not heard the cry of the community. For they must have been prayed and prayed for the joy of the day. To Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Hear then the word of grace. Your sins are forgiven. You may, you may you have the response of reading by Private King Bessie. Bring started, please. Good morning. The response of reading is taken from Psalms 34, verses 1 and 8, 19 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its close to the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my prayers. Love to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamped around those who fear him and delivered him. Take the place of the Lord is good, and we have those who can refuge in him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their wounds. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteousness will be condemned. Lord, the the life of the servants. None of those who take their hand to him will be Charles Lightburn, and then on the 28th, Aaliyah Johnson and Akira Lyon. 
Brother Jack, you had a birthday on the 28th. Or oh, they oh, that's a this trip. On the 29th. Oh, okay. And then on the 30th, Samantha Basin and Aiden Matthews and the 31st Matthew and Matthias Carey. Do we have is Astrid here? Charlie Whiteburn here. Jack, you are here. Is Sam here? Okay, so first let us. Here is here. So Jack, you might shut up. So let us sing the happy birthday song. These wonderful, wonderful person celebrating birthdays. Lord, your word speak to us and through us 
as you listen and learn and practice that it is of your word. Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. You now have the Old Testament reading by Lance Corporal, the one Curtis. Good morning, church. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is taken from Job chapter 42, verse 1 to 6, and 10 to 17. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thought. Who is this the highest counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand. Things who Things were wonderful for me that I did not know. Here and I will speak. I will question you, and I and you declare to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, and now my eyes. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord besought the portions of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before, and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comfort, comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Shemai, Shem the second Kiziel, and the third Kiran have pushed. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters. And their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children for generations. And Job died old and full of days. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much. Now let us turn our hearts and minds to the wisdom and the guidance found in the New Testament reading, Hebrews chapter 7, 23 to 28. Prior to the Hall, Jr. Good morning, church. Good morning. First of all, the home increase were many in numbers because they were prevented by death and continued in office. But he holds his priesthood firmly because he continues forever. Constantly, is able for all time to say to those who approach God and since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we shall have such high priests, holy, blameless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and exalted above their lives. Unlike the other priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices to the applicant. First, for his own sins, and then for those of the people. Because he did once for all to offer himself. For the law appoints as high priests human to prove rejected weaknesses. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints his son to be a perfect devil. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much. We stand for the Holy Gospel. After the Gospel, we will have an anchor by the voice today. The gospel comes to us from Mark, the 10th chapter, reading in verses 46 to 52. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind man, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus! 
son of David, have mercy on me. And he certainly ordered him to be quiet. And he cried out even more loudly. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want of me? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of Christ. Praise be Christ.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The future leaders of tomorrow. It's important for us to mentor and nurture young men. Very important. And that is because it is the men who are doing most of the damage in Nassau and other places throughout our country. And much of it has to do with lack of training, lack of mentoring, and lack of parenting. Mostly the fact that the father is not home. I was on ZNS the other day, and the question was what to me, what is the true problem? What is, what is happening to our country? The crime is on the upswing, and I just gave it to them clean. It has a lot to do with the fact that the father is not at home. I have one son. There is no way he could be roaming about doing stuff. Because I'll hit him one backhand slap, and he'll straighten up. Fly around. Right, Phil? <laughs> Let me again uh, ask a special blessing on you this morning as we worship together. Thank God for all of you, and as always, we acknowledge our musicians, our organists, our liturgists. Captain Honey, and you made Captain already, right? I'm good. <laughs> our tech person, Sister Caroline, our ushers, and fact that the boys will be leading the worship service this morning. This morning, um, I would like to share with you what God has placed on my heart concerning the copy account of the healing. So it's a wonderful narrative, a wonderful encounter between Jesus and Bartimaeus. Let us pray. Father, we pause now in this service to break your word. As always, Heavenly Father, we pray that we are never in the hearers of your word, but do us of your word. Gracious God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts might be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our reading. Amen. So, see, was the encounter between Jesus and blind Bartimaeus is found in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52, concludes a central section in the Gospel of Mark that began in chapter 8, verse 22, with the healing of another blind man, and is followed in chapter 11, verse 1, with Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. These three sections in the Gospel establishes the identity, mission, and the work of Jesus. And it therefore establishes the encounter between Jesus and Bartimaeus as someone who sees Jesus. You see, all of us who seek salvation needs to see Jesus. You can't get salvation unless you see Jesus, unless you acknowledge Jesus. All of us who need our lives, who need our lives to be turned around, we need to see Jesus. All of us who are looking for a miracle need to see Jesus and acknowledge Jesus. But this, you see, was physically blind, but he spiritually saw Jesus and he knew the mission of Jesus as Jesus passed by. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus was blind, but he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus, son of David. Bartimaeus was blind, but he knew the work of Jesus. 
have mercy on me. This is a healing story, it's important. But this is also a recognition story, and this is also a mission story. With the healing story, we have the normal elements of healing. Someone has a problem. Bartimaeus, in this case, he was blind. There are some issues which complicate the matter. In Bartimaeus' case, he had to wait on Jesus. Jesus effects the cure, and the results are confirmed. Bartimaeus is able to see. But there's something else that happened. There's something that we normally do not focus on. There is a response to the miracle. Bartimaeus follows Jesus. This is important because all of us have been healed by God. And how many people you know turn around their eyes after their, mir after their miracle has been established and confirmed and follow Jesus? How many people you know do exactly what Bartimaeus did after his miracle? Follow Jesus. How many people you know who had their lives restored and blessed as Bartimaeus did? And follow Jesus. Do you know how many people I know who said to me, Rev, pray for me. And you pray for them. You go and you visit them in the hospital and you, you pray, you, you trouble the throne of grace, you, you ask God to open heaven and shower them, you ask God to give wisdom to the doctors and the nurses and the caregivers. And then days later, they're out of the hospital and they go right back to doing the same thing they were doing before. You see them hanging out with their buddies, huh? They're drinking buddies. And doing the same thing they did before they had their illness. There's no change. One fellow told me, he said, he can stop drinking. Because him and his drinking buddies, they got so drunk. They were not looking for him. Go ahead and get it. They were so drunk, they went out looking for him. He said, they had trouble finding him. And then they drunk him, but they didn't find him until they got so. Many times, all you hear is, grab. It ain't going to be long until you see me in, in church. I come in, Red. I come in. And you don't see me. The question for us this morning is, how many of you are prepared to leave everything behind? All that is unpleasing under God. All that will keep you from a relationship with God. All the things that weigh you down and cause you not to pray, cause you not to lift up the name of Jesus and praise him. All you do is complain. How many of you would simply leave it all alone at the altar and follow Jesus? The story of Bartimaeus is not only a healing story, but it is consistent with the mission of the church. And the mission services we held a few days ago is exactly what Bartimaeus did. It is a story of a call. And Bartimaeus is an example of a true disciple. He takes nothing with him. He follows Jesus. Jesus tells him, go, you have been healed. And that is exactly what he does. He leaves everything and follows Jesus. He didn't say, Lord, give us some time. We have a good a couple more days. He left everything and followed Jesus. He said, Lord, give us a couple more months so I can deal with this drinking problem. Hmm? 
leaves it all aside, and he follows Jesus. He didn't say, Lord, I got to take care of you things. He didn't say, Lord, now that I got a sight, let me go and, 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 and see some things. Let me go some places and visit some places. He leaves everything. And he follows Jesus. When Jesus sent the 72 out into the mission field, he told them to take nothing with you and greet no one along the way. Now, I've read that passage of scripture many times, and the last time we read it uh, on Wednesday, I had to pause and I had to reflect on it, and I had to ask myself, what is Jesus really saying? And then I realized that is exactly what Bartimaeus did. What Jesus was saying is that the mission of the gospel is serious stuff. And you don't have time to be galilee along the way, hanging out. Your mission is not to keep company and not to keep friends while you are on the mission field. This is serious stuff. The mission must be the focus. That's the reason why Jesus said, Greet no one along the way. I thought about it and I thought Jesus taught them to be Because you know, along the way, he would just stop and they a long conversation. I remember when I was a little boy, after school, I had to go to my grandmother's store, which was on VC Street. We lived through uh, some like village. And my grandmother, she would pay for every last person to come in that store before she closed those doors. And I used to be bad. After 9 o'clock, she just closed up. Choice them closed. No cars on the street. The dogs that were going under the, 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 the house and fell asleep. And me and her, her little short self, we walking, walking from VZ Street the Sunlight Village. And on the way, she got stopped by Mrs. Sargent. Mrs. Sargent, what you say, girl? I wish she was to go at home, because I won't go to bed. <laughs> but surely she stopped it on the way. Hey, Larry, what's your dream last night? Give me that number. Oh, yeah, give me that number. <laughs> The point is that time is short for those who are unsaved, and the preaching of the gospel is urgent and serious business. Mark reports the healing of the blind man in chapter 8 and 22, as we indicated earlier. The question is whether we need another blind story to confirm that Jesus has the power to restore sight. Chapter 8, 22 through 26 indicates that there is a problem with the first healing. It seems that the blind man is not completely healed when Jesus anointed him. He's not completely healed. Jesus has to act again in order for him to see correctly. The truth of the story of blind Bartimaeus is not a follow-up to indicate to us that Jesus had gotten it right this time. Rather, that sometimes healing is progressive. Hmm? Sometimes it takes time. Depending on the disease, sometimes we simply have to wait for the healing process has begun. Sometimes we have relapses, and for that reason, Jesus is still available to complete the healing process. The point also is that we need to see Jesus as Bartimaeus did and accept him and follow him completely. Job followed God. Job not only heard God, but he saw God and he did not give up on God despite his infirmities, despite what his wife said, despite what his friends said, despite the fact that he lost everything including his wealth and his family. And then God healed him. God did not only heal him, but God restored unto him twofold what was taken away from him, gave him a new family, 
and seven sons and three daughters. The daughters were more beautiful than any in the land, and Job had more wealth than any in the land. That is what God does when you see him. You have to see him. Amen? Amen. The writer in Hebrews 7, 23 through 28, reminds us that Jesus is not only the permanent high priest, but that he is able to heal all those who draw near to him. You got to be able to see him. Bartimaeus drew near to Christ. He waited on the side of the road where he knew Jesus was going to pass by. And when Jesus passed by, he got up. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus heard him and told his disciples, bring him to me. Bring him to me. What do you ask of me? What do you want from me? What do you need of me? And those are three questions that God asks of us every single day. And Bartimaeus says, Allow me to see again, which means that Bartimaeus was able to see in the beginning, but now he can't see. He had an illness. And Jesus says, Go, your faith has made you whole. When we have done, we can't do it by ourselves. We need to cry, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. When your cupboard is empty, when your pocket is empty, like mine is, and your cupboard is bare, <laughs> that's when you cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. When things are going bad, you're struggling, you're trying. And over and over and over again, you're making no progress. Well, it seems as if the roof is falling in on you. And the, and the room is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. When things are so rough, you have to deal with issues with your children. It is then that you cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy. Notice that Bartimaeus did not go into any long prayer. But that tells me that he wasn't a human preacher. He simply said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The apostle Peter, my friends, was a prime example of imperfect vision. The Holy Spirit revealed unto him who Jesus was. And he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in the same breath, he rebuked Jesus because Jesus said to him, Flesh and blood have not revealed that unto you. But I tell you, I must die and be raised again on the third day. And I'm dying for your sins and for the sins of the world. Peter rebuked him in the same breath. Imperfect vision. Yet Bartimaeus understood what it meant to follow Jesus when he left everything and followed him. The first blind man is passive. Bartimaeus is not. All of us have been healed. All of us have been blessed. Some of us are passive like the first blind man and some of us are like Bartimaeus. Some of us will not cry out. And some of us will. The first man is brought to Jesus as he enters Bethsaida. And they beg Jesus to touch the blind man. So what happens is um, um, you have those of us who pray for others. And then you have some who pray for themselves. You have those of us who recognize that the illness and the problems others are going through, and you have those of us who recognize our own problems. You have those who are led to Jesus, and you have those who go to Jesus. You have those who are led, and you have those who are called to Jesus. The first blind man is, called, is, is led to Jesus. Bartimaeus 
was called by Jesus. He was heard of Jesus and he believed in Jesus, so he places himself where he knows Jesus is going to pass by and he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. All of us need to place ourselves in a position so when Jesus passes by, we can see him and we can cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What is your response in God? Where are you with your walk with the Lord? Are you looking for him? Are you waiting for him? Or someone has to lead you to the Lord? Then what do you do when you read it? Because both, both are okay. Both are okay. The question is, what do you do when you read it? Finally, my friends, in other encounters with Jesus, he asked the person to follow him or to come and follow him. But he tells Bartimaeus to go. The question is, is go the same as follow? When it leads to the cross, the answer is yes. Following Jesus to the cross becomes going and telling others what we have seen and experienced when we saw Jesus hanging from Jesus, my friends, is the only high priest. He is our Lord, the Savior, the Messiah, the giver of life, the restorer of sight, the Son of David. And all of us are required to cry out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy. God bless you and keep you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this time to break your word. We pray, O oh God, that your word will take root in our lives. Some of us are searching for you, O oh God. Some of us are being led to you, O oh Heavenly Father. But in each and every case, we find you and you effect a healing. Father, place each and every one of us in a position so that we know your mission, we know your work, and we know who you are. And all of us may cry out in our hearts and in our spirit. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my children. Have mercy on my husband. Have mercy on my wife. Have mercy on my life. For I bless your children gathered here this morning. And I bless them in your name and in every way possible. Christ our Lord. Amen.
and Paul's great dedication from Wednesday, 12 15, 1 p.m. Members, I encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities to engage in worship. Upcoming circuit and events in the year. This month in November, the first All Saints Day in Paul's 6 p.m. Second, the second November, early morning for a female beach sign at 6 a.m. On the ninth, the circuit leadership seminar in Paul's sign at 9 a.m. Tenth, Monday Sunday, the Dutch Foundation is all together. Seventeenth, on the seventh year of power service, youth and young adult. And also on the seventeenth, the Jewish fourth anniversary service will be at 8 p.m. Rebel of Kina, Kina, Brian Seymour, Superintendent Mr. St. Paul Baptist Church, be the preacher of the official Germans Day Service at St. Paul's on the very start of the Speak Catholic Church on Sunday, November 10th at 8 p.m. Be sure to tune in tonight at 9 p.m. to the CCI Conference Radio Program Vision on ZNS TV Channel or ZNS TV Channel 230. Or radio Bahamas 1540. The Circuit Women Monthly Meeting will be held at St. Paul tonight. I'm uh, sorry, tonight. The Circuit Women's Monthly Meeting will be held at St. Andrew's Truck tomorrow at 7 p.m. All women in the Circuit are asked to make a special effort to attend. St. Paul is the Women's Confessor, the celebration of our church's anniversary. But the organizing some of the members who have been devoted a lifetime to welfare and work for the church. This event is planned for Saturday, November 16th at 8 a.m. That will be thanks to the graphics of St. Paul's President Paul. The mission is $20. Contact this for the current meeting for the field. The purchase of the first of the church bus. Please note that the donation box has been placed before that table. For the convenience. Also, fast cards are available from any of the community members. Thank you, and we look forward to your support. The scripture reading for the week are listed. Please take note of them. Utilize them. Please remember our sacred Sundays and continue to pray for our visit. But if you pray, pray, not pray for them and visit them whenever possible, they are listed for them. Continue to keep your prayer for the family of Sister Karen Evans, whose prayer was held yesterday at the meeting. Pray for all who are mourning at this time. Parents for the meeting of the Lord's Nominees, please take your husband's home and follow the medical advice. Thank you very much, Warren. David Rush. Lord said, do not look around because you will be impressed. Do not look down because you will be depressed. Just look to me and you will be blessed. You will now have an auditory prayer by Friday, the Andrew, the Andrew, yes. Please stand up with an auditory prayer, please.
I know you shall have five when you go to home, 50 for the dog, but I don't want you to charge for hour. <laughs> now the close to him, when the anchor hold in the storms of life, when the clouds unfold in the days of strife, when the strong ties lift and the cable stream, when the anchor hold of fire remain. Please, sir. <laughs>
Peace now, and may the God of peace go with you this day and every other day. Ah.